What's up, YouTubers? We just got through eating dinner after a nice long day of kayak fishing. Yeah. And I'm not uh, naked anymore. No, he's not naked anymore. Thank God. Uh, I wouldn't be in the truck he was. And uh, we're a little bit redder, although on the screen look we look a lot redder than what we really are because the sun's setting. Yeah. Yeah. Neither one of us is that red. Uh, we are. Well, Chris maybe. Okay, dude. <laughs> not cool, man. Not, not cool. cool. So. But, uh, so, so, Mr. Cordova. Yes. How did you feel about today's experience? Today's experience, well, on an educational thought. It was outstanding! Did you feel like that you thoroughly enjoyed yourself? Hmm. Now, that is a question to be answered. And this clip will prove if I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Would you consider kayak fishing uh, on a regular basis? Hmm. My answer comes right now. And uh, would you uh, also consider recommending kayaking, kayak fishing to others, other anglers? Hmm. My answer comes right now. Oh, you wonder what the dollar's for? Toll booth. I, I actually know he's been paid to to say all this stuff, so therefore that's why he's. And now I have to spend it. Yeah. So that's why. To this person, you'll see in just momentarily, the person in Aloha shirts. Hola. Good evening. Hello. Thank you. That guy. Told you, Aloha shirts. They Not even in Hawaii, but they still wear them. They seem very, um, very personal. Personable. Personable. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Next question. So, so how did you feel about today's experience? My answer comes right now. Would you care to expand on that? Today's experience, well, let's see. Even though I lost my GoPro, this clip will show you how upset I was. It turned out very, very well. Very well. Um, I kind of had my, my doubts about the kayak in the middle of the ocean, but Considering that we went 10 miles out and surprisingly enough the swells, there was points when we were in the troughs and the swell was almost double overhead and yet it was still sturdy and it's a totally different ball game on a kayak when you're trying to fish for sharks. Oh it is, yeah. I Whenever I had a, uh, whenever I had my uh, pretty sunset. Oh yeah, here. Yeah, whenever I had mine uh, on the line, it kept like doing circles around my around my yak. Chris yeah. almost lost his fishing pole. I, seriously, no joke. Because as soon as I set the hook, he ran and you know, nearly yanked my six out right out of my hands. And then when you had him to the boat. All of a sudden, I'll see all the splashing, and then your pole almost went over again. Yeah, I mean... Ooh, Skyway. Yeah, there's a Skyway bridge. One mile up, one mile down. Yes, sir. So, we, uh, after talking about the, uh, the shark that was on my line, we came to the conclusion that we don't think it was a black tip. And, uh... I actually got a glimpse of it, and I don't remember seeing any black tips on its fins. But it did have kind of a, a golden tint to it. It either be a tiger or a bull. It's either a, a tiger sand shark or it was a bull shark. 
I'm thinking it was a bull shark because for as small as, I mean, because it was only about four or five feet long, and it was pretty darn aggressive. I mean, he had a lot of large energy, and although it could just, could have been, I wasn't used to fighting him in the plan, too. Yeah. Be that as it may, it was a fun fight. And Jared got pulled around on this. Yes, I did. He got, he got to go on a little bit of a ride. I'm still waiting to go on my 11 mile journey with a fish on the end of my hook. It was, uh, <clears throat> we think that he, uh, he had a ray. But definitely an awesome experience. Uh, I would definitely recommend uh, an ocean kayak to a first-time kayak ang angler, uh, spe uh, specific, or at least uh, this particular one, the, the Tetra 12s, uh, because uh, they're they're extremely sturdy um, on the water. I mean, extremely sturdy. Despite the fact that Jared had to see how sturdy they really were. Yeah. I push it to its limits. Yeah, he well he has a tendency to do that. You do kind of have a tendency to push the envelope past its, you know. With my response comes this clip. <laughs> so yeah, but you know, I think uh I, I think today was Good. Like I said, I would definitely recommend uh, the uh, the Tetra 12. Too. I'll tell you, when we first got out there fishing, Chris was like, so, you want to see how far these things go? And I'm like, how about we just kind of chill here for a minute? Before I knew it, we were so far out that you couldn't see the people on, on the, the beach. beach. No. And so when we decided to come back, that the swells were so big, and we were cruising. Oh, we were hooking it, dude. That when you got into the trough and you hit that... What would it be? You hit, swell? You hit that swell? I mean... And was, the water just rushes over you. I yeah. mean, it's just intense. I mean, you've seen those... Uh, if you've ever watched the, the Deadliest Catch show, whenever they're hitting those waves and the, and the water's spraying over the, over the, uh, the bow of the ship... That was us. That was us. Uh, on these little kayaks. It was, I mean... I mean, the, the swells were, what, like four, four feet? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which, you know, I mean, y'all think, oh, well, it's just a four-foot swell. In a freaking kayak! There's a whole yeah, different voice. And on that comment comes this clip. But, um... I mean, all right, you, you, you want to picture a four-foot wave, you're going to be like, whoop de doo But when you lose your partner in a trough, because it's so high above you, that's how big they are. Yeah. It can be a little intimidating if, if you know, if you don't know what you're doing. Which, uh, we really didn't know. No, we this doing. is our first time on, on yaks. I've never been on a yak before. So, we kind of pushed the envelope just a little bit today. But, uh, but, you know, those, uh, those yaks really rolled over the waves quite well. Oh, very much. Um, the, uh, the lady at the Bass Pro Shop was, uh, who uh, sold them to us. Ooh, ooh, nice Ferrari. Um, said that they were very stable, very sturdy, and that they rolled over the waves very, uh, very well. And I, I have to say that I, I agree with her. I, yeah, I agree. She, uh, she definitely knows her stuff on that. What was your favorite part of the yacht? Yeah. Besides, your, besides your, your hooting and hollering and getting naked. Let me clarify, I wasn't really naked, I just took my shirt off. Half naked. Uh, the upper half. I think that I can get in places that I didn't think I was ever going to be able to get to. And not with a 32 foot boat either. No. No way. Heck, not even with like an old 24 footer. I mean, considering that you're in a kayak that weighs 65 pounds, and you're out in the middle of nowhere. And when I say the middle of nowhere, comes this clip. You know what's amazing though is that uh, we were, when we were on the beach, we can't. We actually we landed for, uh, for a short time to kind of hydrate up and 
kind of take a breather before we went back out. And the gags were sitting in like two inches of water and floating freely in two inches of water. Try and try and do that with your, you know. Oh no, yeah, we saw a sailboat that was tipped over because it got too shallow of water and the tide went out. Yep. That's what I just picked mine up and just walked. I mean, this, these things are going to do really well on the flats. I think we should go on the flats next time with the Sappers. See what we can... Right there. Yeah, right there. See if we can, uh... See what kind of reds we can pull out. Reds and specs. So... Rock on. I am very satisfied with today. Very. I can't wait to do it again. I'm gonna sleep very well tonight. You know that comment comes to this clip. So, well, besides that, uh, is there anything else you want to add? That comment here comes to this clip. So there we go. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, bring this to a close, and we'll catch you guys on the flip side. Comes to this clip. Peace. Deuces.